She is sitting in bed with a mug of red wine and a book. She is barely reading the book. Mostly she is thinking. Occasionally she drinks from the mug. She is thinking that she is a weak person. She is thinking that her main weakness is her fear of fighting with people. She cannot bear to fight, not with anyone, even people she hates. This means she will do anything to resolve a disagreement right away, even if it means admitting she is wrong when she is not wrong, or apologizing when she is not sorry. Her ex-husband was not afraid of fighting. He even seemed to enjoy it a little. She decides that this is why he always got his way. She pictures them in bed after an argument, her crying and him silent. Sometimes he would leave the room when he noticed that she was crying, but most of the time he would remain in the room. She would heat up and stare into space and give lengthy imagined speeches. She would stay quiet, and it was like being quiet while being pinched very hard. She would wait for him to speak, or to show some signs of longing for her to speak, but he showed no signs of longing, and he continued not to speak. Often, she first broke the silence with a few soft, inarticulate sounds. Then, with mounting panic, a herd of language followed like frightened animals. She would say she was sorry, and his face would morph into a gentler face. She remembers her merging sense of relief and defeat. She feels embarrassed. Outside it is snowing. She looks out her small window and is soothed by the great load of whiteness. One bundled man is walking slowly by, leaving a trail of dark gouges in the snow. It is coming down harder now than it was earlier, when she had walked the dog. On the steps of her building, someone had dropped a few Polaroids and she had stopped to look at them. In one, she identified an arm and half a smiling head, but the other two Polaroids were entirely defaced, just marbled squares of brown and yellow. She wonders now if her husband was also giving imagined speeches during the silences that followed their fights. She thinks a moment and decides not. She decides that he was as detached as he appeared to be. She thinks that she would not want his skill of leaving in the presence of someone, but an instant later, she realizes that this is a total lie, because she would certainly rather be like him than like her. She would certainly rather leave than be left. She reads three lines in her book, but doesn't hear them. She rereads them, and the words seem to dissolve. She worries, as she always worries when this happens, that she will never be able to read again, that, will, that she will be spending the rest of life trapped in a chamber of her own thoughts, just a tortured head talking to itself. But she assures herself that these voices, her voices, always die down to a static hum. Probably, she thinks, her mind will be emptied by tomorrow, like a shaggy forest after a storm, cool and dripping and still. Then, she thinks, I will be able to read. She puts the book down and finishes her wine. She lies on her side and begins to relax. She thinks that she can only relax when she is exhausted, but she is glad to be exhausted. She likes to sleep. She likes when it comes down like an axe. 